I'm back to doing um, the basics. <laughs> I don't have my selfie stick. I don't have my laptop. I don't have you anything much really. Um, yeah, I'm in the rec room and like, yeah, I've been here. <laughs> you know, the one to two hours my so bulb modular sleep pattern. Yeah, anyway, um, it's totally ridiculous that I'm here right now. I've just figured out this morning how I'm going to cope with the stressor of my nasty neighbours that, that are just opposite me. It's this Indian couple and yeah, they're not very nice. Um, they're incredibly rude to me. Um, and I actually had a really nasty run in with her. I had a really nasty run in with him to do with stuff to do with the laundry. Um, and I lost my temper a bit then. He was quite a dick to me, really. And um, yeah, she was being a real bitch. Um, yeah, and it was just really, really unfortunate timing, eh? And I lost my temper, and sadly, they've rung up and complained to the police about me, I think, or some stupid bullshit. And other people in the building, even, they had nothing to do with it, had actually rung up mental health, um, which is pretty shitty for me. Like, so I'm going to have to be super careful from now on because you get the wrong phone calls from the wrong people to mental health and your ass gets dragged in here and you get admitted, which is exactly what's happened to me. You know, I was finally ready to go on a road trip down to see my grieving family because my sister took her life August 23, 2019. And I had a tattoo appointment to get to. So I'm getting a tattoo here and my nose pierced here. And um, that's all tied up with my grief too because my little sister Hannah Bainbridge she came for me when I got my second set of earrings. You know, for moral support, like, and me and Ruby, like, the day before that, we were meant to go, you know, Jable on Tuesday with plans and um, go and get my nose done. But it's all going to have to wait till the end of school holidays now. And the psychiatrist has told me yesterday that he thinks I'm going to be in here for two to three weeks. So, great. So... I'm going to have to wait two or three weeks for everything to be sorted. Like, as soon as I'm discharged from here, I'm, I'm going to urgently need to see Dr. Mauricio because he's really the guy who, he's the doctor that knows me well and knows what the best course of treatment is for me. Um, see, this psychiatrist has prescribed me medication that I'm allergic to, and I tried telling him, and I've even got, like, scars from a biopsy. Um, like, you know, like here on my upper thigh and another scar. I've got two scars there from my last hospital admission. To, you know, and I had the rash on my arm. But they don't listen to you in here. Well, there's a difference between listening and hearing and they do not hear you. Um, so yeah, pretty fucked basically. Excuse my French. Anyway, um, Sometimes you've just got to shut up and take whatever you're given because um, you haven't got a hope in hell of being able to self-advocate. And if you try, they'll slam, you, slam a compulsory treatment order down your throat. It's actually really nasty. And what's more, it's very triggering for people with trauma. Now, I'm a person with trauma because I have complex PTSD. Um, yeah, or um, see, there's a psychiatrist that's said complex PTSD. And my psychiatrist has said... Um, PTSD so and yet this doctor even though I now know what's been going on all these years is, is because I've got a history of a bipolar misdiagnosis he's decided to run with that and say you're manic and you're having a bipolar episode you're really 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 sick you know and it's totally ludicrous um, but like I'm not going to take it personally because um, I'm very easily misunderstood and it's actually really complex stuff with me and it's hard to understand and um, yeah and I tried talking to him on an initial meeting and giving a bit of background and explaining things to him but he just had his blinker vision and just wanted to label me as bipolar and manic and then my mum my was also in that meeting via Facebook Messenger and she um, basically backed him up and said yep my child's manic you know and she's just been a selfish little bitch 
and she's um, saying unhelpful information to mental health all over again. It's like deja vu from when I was 21. I've now had to block my mother's cell phone number, block her landline, and block her on my Facebook Messenger for my own safety and protection. Isn't that tragic? And my dad's gone AWOL because the day before that there was an initial assessment done and then I got put under an act for five days. Um, for some reason the psychiatrist, who also doesn't know me from Bar of Soap, rang my dad for his opinion and whatever dad said wasn't very helpful. And my dad has not bothered to communicate with me at all. He's not bothered to visit at all. And also, or call even, and also he can't even drop off a card or um, drop off any food or anything and he lives literally five minutes away. My dad's a bit of a man child, he needs to grow the hell up. And my mother's a silly little drama queen and she needs to grow up too. Um, yeah, because she does, she tells exaggerated stories. Like she tries, she's, one time she was making up a story about how she hasn't eaten chicken since we left the farm when I, was 13, when I was 13, you know? Which is a load of crap because I used to work at KFC my last year of high school and we got KFC. One day we got we got a because you have a staff discount right of 20 percent we got chicken and mum always used to cook this banana chicken thing because her partner fart face um it's all here as a gigantic fart and you'll know where they come from anyway um her husband or whatever oh well it's her shitty decision it's her life whatever anyway um so yeah while I'm in here. Oh, and I blocked Fat Face's number and it's going to stay blocked forever because he's a very, very nasty man. And um, of recent months, I've told Mum that he's basically not allowed at my wedding because he's brought so much pain and darkness into all of our lives and he's not going to be there sucking joy out of like what will be one of the most happiest days of my life, you know. I don't know if I will ever get married or not, but yeah, that's, that's the story there. So, yeah. Um, and that's my timer telling me that my two hours are up for my biomodular sleep pattern. And I need to go <laughs> and get some more shut eye. So, I'm going to love and leave this channel. Yeah, because it's going to be loaded to the YouTube, you know. <laughs> Hug, 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 ear hug. <laughs> mm -hmm.